Okay guys, we're back here. It's Tuesday. Back working on the lean-to project. And uh, we're digging all this clay out. We're gonna have to put a perimeter drain in this this uh, area like we did the other side of that barn. There's a drain under here, but this water is actually deeper than the water was in there. So now we gotta run it. Drain going that way. There's a it run we can run out the daylight out that way. Right where that tractor is. Past Kevin the Kubota. We're gonna run that. The guys are digging out the clay. This whole area was all clay. We graveled it Friday. But that didn't help. That did not or actually third no, it was Friday we graveled it. Thursday or Friday last week and it did not work to drain it out so gotta get this clay out of here and get some stone in here some pipe paper it the whole nine yards get the um get some drainage going otherwise we won't be able to pour this concrete on top of that wet nastiness that's what we're up up to i'm on the mini okay you guys this is where we're at. Got a lot of clay dirt dug out of there. We are uh, heading right out to daylight here. I just got off the excavator. Greg's gonna finish it up. We found an old pipe that doesn't work. That old black corrugated crap that I don't like. It's not working. We could probably cut that right off, Mike. But so, try to get it back yeah, out. Yeah. That's Right in this whole bench. Did it? Yeah. Oh. Chris is on the excavator. Or on the skidster, I mean. Cleaning up the clay. Drags finally into the sand. Just gonna pan that right out. fill this ditch right in with stone and gravel so that uh, it drains it right out. Water's flowing now guys. We're getting it out of there. We're going to clean this ditch right out for him. Make it nice. Yeah, we got a stump right here, guys. Underneath this building. Right, got it, though. What a mess. It's kind of how you do it backwards. <laughs> Dig out the barn after you build it. That's kind of backwards, ain't it? <laughs> See, we got like no gravel in here. Why we're digging it out. It's all clay. You see there's freaking roots and shit in it. Just nasty. So we're doing it backwards. I can shovel some too. I got a shovel. And I ain't afraid to use it. Hey Chris, you can start shuffling this clay out of here as he digs it. We're, today is uh, Tuesday and we want to pour this floor Thursday, so we got a lot of work to do. We got plumbing to do and all kinds of stuff. And they knocked that down. Nice, a root. Another tree root. Oh, what a mess. Chris is getting it out of here. Oh, We're making some progress here. Got the 
this all dug down, ran into, back into the gravel. So we're just cleaning out this last bit of clay dirt right here. Chris is still taking it away with the skidster. You can see the clay dirt right here. Problem with this clay dirt, guys, it holds water. And uh, being under this floor like that, holding water, and then if all that water was held up in here, um, in the winter time that would freeze and heave his whole floor up. So you don't want that clay dirt underneath your, underneath your concrete. You don't want organic dirt, you don't want clay dirt, you want free draining dirt, gravel, stone, it doesn't freeze. And you also need to get the water out of it. Say we didn't put this perimeter drain in, we just did the gravel, the gravel would hold the water acts like a swimming pool here because the clay all the way around it would just hold the water and we need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of the water. We are putting a double drain system in here guys. In case one ever clogs up we'll have two. We're going to run them right down all the way to daylight. Got all the pipe here. We put Marify paper down so that the stone doesn't get contaminated with clay. We're gonna put a little bit of stone down on top of the paper, and then we will put our uh, pipe on and cover it with stone. That's what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cover that with stone. We got caps on the end of this stuff here. Mike's tamping out our uh, all the gravel we put in here. Chris is putting the skirt board on, and we're making good progress now. It's 2.30, and this is where we're at. Greg's putting in a water line, because we got to have a water line in here for uh, the bathroom. And we got the skirt board on, we got it filled in pretty decent. I think you're safe. They're putting the back skirt board on now. Everything's been tamped about four times so far. We're still working our way up. Our perimeter drain's in. We did a double drain. It goes right out through here. It's all covered in stone. It's got Marify paper under it and over it. it. Comes out to here. This is gonna be a French drain. It's gonna catch any water in this back area and dry this area right out. There's our double drain, right there. And she's working, because there's already water running down and out. And everything's drying up, so we're in good shape. And we're gonna grab something to eat. Oh yeah, we, put, we banked the skirt board with gravel. Some gravel had a little clay mixed into it, because that's just to hold the dirt dirt and our, hold the concrete back. It's all ready to go. Craig's got to get in there and we got to kind of mess up what we did, but we got to dig across what we did. It's kind of counterproductive, but that's the only way we can do it really. That water line's going over here. So that's how Greg's going to do it. He's got to get in here. I'm going to have to scoop out the gravel with uh, Kevin the Kubota. Once he digs it up, we get rid of that, all that clay dirt that he digs up because he this water line's got to be about four and a half feet deep. All the way to the house. Go eat some lunch. Yep. You know what that means. Make us proud, Greg. I had a little cave in here. Let me get out of the way. Ah! Jeez. Whack me, dude.
caving underneath his uh, air conditioning unit. We gotta get it, uh, get the line in there. You're getting a little deep there, Buckshot. Yeah, he's straddling the ditch. Don't try this at home. Right? Don't try this at home. <laughs> this is professionals at work. This isn't the DIY day. As soon as we get that line in there, we can just backfill it. Yeah, look at that. Not too heavy. One more scoop up by the house. Need to come ahead a little more. Uh, I think you can get him. You can get it. One scoop. A little more. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah, right there. I got Yeah. Yeah, it's hollow under there. Got that big blob out of there at least. Yeah. What are you doing? Probably not even waterlogged, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll just leave that right where the barn goes. <laughs> oh boy. I'm bailing this organic dirt out while Greg digs. And we're almost gonna get our water line in here. Going right to the house. We have to bury our water lines deep here in New York. We got another piece. There we go. Shake it off first. Oh my goodness. Right underneath the concrete floor she would have been. tree in here and it's a big one tree or stump or something I never seen somebody build a barn on top of a bunch of trees and stuff it's not the way you do it 
show you that one in a second when he gets it dug out. It's so big you can't even budget. You might as well, yeah, you're gonna have to dig it right out. You might as well pull the whole thing out. Make sure it's far enough in there. I'm sure there's. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll uh, put some of this clay dirt I'll over it. I'll yeah, I'll stay back here. At least if it caves in, we got the pipe in there now. As long as it's in the basement, <laughs> that'd be our luck. Yeah. That's what we're doing though. Coming right up, all the way in here. We're gonna pop it up over here. It's gonna pop up out right there. Just flatten out the bottom of the ditch. Only found what four or five trees. A couple trees. No biggie. Except down there, we haven't done that yet. This is all buried. We're bringing it up right there. And we're gonna try to tamp it. I think we can get the tamper in there. Well, well it's gonna be close. It's gonna be tight. I could put a little more here, but it's gonna fall here. Yeah, you can, even if it gets up there, I can pull it off there with the ring. Ready? Catch this. The tamper? Uh, I don't know. It's not really wide. I'm gonna swing the excavator over there. There you got clearance issue. You're gonna spin because you got it all that weight on one track. Sling that down in here so we can tamp this up in lifts. That way she won't settle underneath our floor. That's the game plan. Then we can get rid of all this organic. And, uh, you might as well order another load of gravel because we're going to use most of this gravel right here. To fill this water line in yeah another item four yep we're gonna eat that whole load up putting this in there we go oh it fits like a dream I'm putting a sleeve around it where it comes up out of the floor there and we're gonna bury it yeah sure okay gravel we got a whole pile of gravel here. Need to level it anyways. And we can tamp it. And we can tamp it. We're 
working our way up and lifts. He's straight to here. That part there we just backfilled because that is uh, nothing's gonna dry over that up in here. So we're not worried it's not inside our building. Got about two more scoops to put in here and then we're good to go. This is where we ended up, about quarter after six. About ready to get out of here. Perimeter drains in. I got the grade roughed in of his yard here. The inside's all ready for styrofoam. Do have some piles of dirt out here. I gotta let that dry up before we can do much with that. Here's our drain right here, double drain. Looking good. Should stiffen right up now. We just tamped it. Everything looks good. We had a good day's work. Got the water line in, perimeter drain in. Everything filled in and ready to go for tomorrow. We're gonna lay our foam and then we're gonna pour this bad boy on Thursday. Today is Tuesday. We used every bit of gravel that we had to. It's all backfilled. I think it's beer 30. Hmm. This is what we're doing this morning, guys. It's Wednesday. We're going to be pouring this tomorrow. We, there's going to be a bathroom here. So we put some walls here to mock it out. And uh, we got a bunch of plumbing to put in here. So we're just hand digging everything. Try to keep the disturbance minimal. So we don't have to do too much rework on uh, our grade because we have our grade pretty good but this is the only way you can get it tamped good is to put it in tamp it and then hand dig out your plumbing i guess you could do it a different way but that's the way we do it that way we can tamp just this little area we can get it tamped good around the pipe but we got everything else pretty close i think we're ready for foam i'm gonna have to put a little bit of gravel around but we are uh we were pretty close once we get this plumbing done we can do our foam and we got to put radio heat in here and then uh put a bulkhead on the where the end of the building is do our foam around the perimeter and then we can uh be ready for concrete tomorrow morning 8 a.m i'll show you what this plumbing looks like when we get it in Got a bunch of uh, four inch stuff. We like to run bigger bigger than you need underneath the concrete, because if you go bigger than you need, if you ever have a problem, you can snake it out easier. That's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna oversize everything a little bit. Okay, guys, this is what we're doing. So we did that pipe's gonna come right out because we stuffed it into the other floor and we got our these pipes here i got them at supply house really nice probably see them in the other video um, but we had to put them under here because we poured that floor and we want to be able to snake our lines up and in we we don't need any foam here because we got foam on the other side so this is a conditioned space here but when you get down here this is cold storage space, so we are putting a piece of foam on there. We cut that at a bevel. And the rest of it is going to be inside the wall, so we just cup it flat. 
going along this whole exterior. And we're just waiting on uh, Greg to finish up the plumbing. He's got it almost done. He's got this one coming over here. Like I said, he oversized everything, so it's easy to clean. That comes up there. Comes over here. He's got his wall mocked up. It's gonna be a, I think that's a vent right there. Everything pitches down to here. Going in and out. And we just gotta put one going over here. And he's got to come over to here, and there's going to be uh, a sink on the other side of that wall, I believe. So he's almost got that done. So we're doing good. And then we got to finish foaming all this. We got to backfill his pipe. Finish backfilling, get that tamped, get all this backfilled, tamp everything, move this mock up wall, and uh, put our foam board down. And then we can put our radiant heat down. We're going to be in good shape for tomorrow for our pour. Well, we screwed up. We have to take this foam back up because we forgot to put our poly down. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, Mike's taking the perimeter bag off. We're just gonna pick it all out and roll our poly down because we want the poly under the foam. We gotta move the skidster out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we forgot the plastic. We're getting it now though. This is six mil poly, the good stuff. I'm just gonna put our foam right back down. Forgot our vapor bear. What? Bunch of amateurs. We're still ahead of the plumber over there with his pants hanging down. He's a true plumber, Greg is. Finishing up burying the plumbing. We're gonna put a box right here for the shower drain. Chilling out here, there's a cap on it there. Greg's putting a piece of the stub coming up for the toilet. Everything's cooking nice. We started putting our poly down. We forgot. Started to get that glue in. Oh, in good shape. We're gonna use some wooden stakes. And this here, I screwed in at an angle at the top because we want to take this out later. So I didn't put any screws in it this way. That way we can take that out after the concrete dries. It doesn't need to be in there. Okay, this is how we're running our radiant heat. We got a stapler and we're gonna staple it to the foam. So the first thing we do is we snap a bunch of lines at one foot a one foot grid so i take some orange paint and i mark it at one foot and then the, um, mike and chris snapped all these lines so we're going to run most of the lines lengthwise so we did run four lines this way and then we stopped because right here we're going to be doing our turns so we need a few lines on the ends but you don't need to put lines down the whole thing and this barn is about 1500 feet so what we're going to do is we are gonna this is gonna be a zone up here there's a bathroom and there's a room here and there's gonna be a wall so that's gonna be one loop and that's under 500 foot so we're gonna run that on one loop and then this section here is a thousand foot we're gonna run two 500 foot loops on that and if you use a um, strong pump the right pump you can get away with 500 foot loops we do it all the time and it, they work really good and we're going to come up out of here with our tubing and i'll show you how we staple it down and then we're going to lay the wire mesh on top of the tubing and then the wire mesh is right up into the bottom of the slab where we want it so the tubing will hold the wire up that's our new way we've been doing it so it's working really good for us so i'm gonna set up and get going on that here's our stapler Made by Melco. 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 That's the one we got right there. PWS1. That is a nice little machine right there. Show you how it works. 
I don't ever have any trouble unless we open the roll and we try to read it and it got like we had that one the other day. Yeah, yeah. that's not fighting. That made me feel really stupid. That made me feel really dumb. <laughs> How easy it is, right? All right, we got the septic in. Here's one of those little bullet tanks. That's a tank. The line comes out of the building. We're just bedding that and uh, bedding that and sand it now. And it comes over and it hooks into uh, all the plumbing we did inside of there. And there's a, there's a clean out there and a vent, clean out, clean out slash vent right there. So. And we're gonna put some water in that tank. It's a plastic tank. Greg's just filling it up with sand. We already bed this section. That's what you do. You bed it in by hand, put a little bit over the top, and then uh, stomp it in with your feet, and then backfill it. There's no rocks in this soil either. So if you got stones in your soil, you want to um, make sure you don't use that soil. This is all sand. This is nice sand. It's just dry sand. They must have hauled it in here. Just lots all clay. What we're doing the boys are finishing up over there i'll check in with you before we leave we're gonna be ready to pour here for tomorrow morning get everything picked up and get out of here let's get roll guys you ready to go to work you ready to go hold on get in the truck rowan get in the truck come on buddy off. Come on, roll. Get in the truck, buddy. Come on. He's going crazy. Come on, you crazy man. Come on, get in the truck. Come on, buddy. We gotta go. We got concrete coming. We got concrete coming. Come on. There's Carl the Kubota. Come on. Get in there, bud. Get in there. Get in there. Come on. Boom. Shotgun rider. Ready to go. Somebody's excited. Right, bro? You excited for the job? Or 
just about at the job, bro. Bro, we're almost there, buddy. You getting excited? Yeah, almost there. That guy was just pulling into the job here. Yeah? It's 20 after 7. Concrete's coming at 8. There's Chris. The blue truck. Rose, I think Rose ready to go. He's ready to pour. So, this is the one we poured last week. This is a homeowner. We poured this section last week. We're pouring this section today. This lean-to section. It's gonna be a good day. Gonna be a good day, Rotor. Gonna be a good day, Rotor. You ready, boom? Bro, you ready? You ready to work? Let's do it. Let's do it, bud. Here's the floor we did last week, guys. If you've seen it in the video. He's keeping it wet. Like I said, he's going to wet it for uh, like a week, at least a week. That's the way to do it. If you can wet carrier your slabs, they're going to be a lot stronger. But over here is the section that we're going to pour today. So today, guys, we're pouring 4,000 pound mixed concrete. It's got low air in it. And uh, we got radiant heat in here, obviously. So we got uh, the tubing underneath the wire mesh, as you can see. So that keeps that wire mesh up like an inch. So we're still gonna pull it up a little bit, but I don't wanna pull it up too high. This floor is about five inches thick. So we got rakes that we pull up the wire with. These uh, potato rakes. But when you do it this way, you got to be careful not to hook the tubing with the rake. So, but actually, you want that wire down in the bottom of your slab and the tension side. So, if you're putting pressure on the top of the slab, if you're loading the slab, and it ever was to crack, it would be on the tension side of, which is the bottom of the um, of the concrete pad. That's the tension side. If you had it on the top or the middle, it would just act like a hinge when it broke and it wouldn't wouldn't uh, support it from pushing down. So that's why you want it in the bottom third of your slab. So now that we're doing it this way, the wire's in a lot better place. Um, we got that staple gun like you've seen. Works really good. And we're ready to rip. We're just waiting for Circle T. Should be here any minute. We got our laser set up over there. We, we keep our laser on a bracket. I made this bracket here out of aluminum and your laser sits right on there you could screw it right to uh one of the six by sixes instead of a tripod it's a lot stabler and then we set our laser to the top of this board that's our height that we want we're using a 14 foot screed we're going to put a wet pad down the middle here we're just going to pull it from the back to the front we are using a conveyor truck today and we're going to wheel this back section with these brentwood wheelbarrows we do have some pieces of plywood that we're going to set down to dump on so we don't this cutter edge on the front of the wheelbarrow would um, kink the tubing if you weren't careful right here when you tipped it so we put plywood down so we can dump it and that's how we do it so we'll wheel this back section because we're not going to reach the whole thing this barn's 24 by 64 this section here this other side is 40 by 64 so and, uh, that's how we're going to do it or this piece out here is not heated. This is gonna be a little port area. So this here, we're gonna add a little extra air entrainment, which uh, is for freeze thaw cycles. We're gonna put that in there, which will, uh, because that's gonna be outside, not heated. And I imagine we're gonna put a broom finish on this here, like a hand broom finish. And then the rest of it, we're gonna probably hand trowel we're gonna power trowel, but we'll probably finish it with a with a hand float finish or a hand troweled finish. And uh, that's gonna be kind of like non-slip. That's what we did in here in this barn. It looks a lot better once it cures all out and you get it wet, get it curing out. That's like how it looks. That section has radiant heat in this back corner here. Show you that. 
right here, we put uh, that foam board with that two by six. Or, yeah, and he's gonna build a wall right on top of that, right on top of this board. It's gonna have a wall in there and it goes over there and there's another one. So this is all heated. We put these tubes in. This is the two tubes that go to this section in here. And then we snuck them underneath there when we poured that section and we fed through these. And uh, I got this thing here at the supply house, this uh, conduit system. We usually use electrical conduits, but this thing's a lot easier to trowel around. It's a little more expensive, but, and I had this long tail on there. So that's how we did that. We put foam underneath it. We come right underneath that two by six so we could feed from this side. And these things, you can actually get two tubes in there. You can get two half inch tubes in each one. So, um, they, and you can cut them apart with the table saw. So you can get different sizes, but we got like, a, I think an eight one and we cut it. And then we put this going that direction when we poured that one and these ones obviously are going this direction. Stay tuned, just waiting on the mud. We got the dream team today. Chris and Mike, Big Biscuit, and the Gopher. Say hi, boys. How's it going? Ready to rip? <laughs> yeah, invited to the party. We're just waiting on our mud. Got the dream team. We'd call it the A team if we were... Mike, Mike would call it the A team. <laughs> It's the new conveyor. I think it's Travis. I think Travis is running it. He's backing in. Circle T, baby. 9632231 for your concrete needs in the central New York area. That's where we work. Yeah, baby. That's their new conveyor. It's an old volumetric truck. They put a new conveyor on it. It's a really nice Mac. What's up, dog? That is a beautiful. No, that's a Freightliner. That's a beautiful truck. I like me Freightliners. Clifford the Red Dog is a Freightliner. Man, that's a nice truck. Freightliner, that's a nice truck. Beautiful truck. Travis hoodie. Woo! Looking warm with the orange on. We're all wearing orange. Chris has got the orange on. I got the orange on. Mike's got the orange on. Dustin don't have his orange hoodie on or biscuit. These orange hoodies are warm. They're really heavy. This is a conveyor truck, guys. If you haven't watched my videos, it's uh, got a huge boom on there. He's opening up. And it's got a trimmy hose on the end of it. This is how it works. This belt just spins. And concrete dumps out of it. It's a rear loader truck. And the concrete dumps down the chute onto the conveyor. And then once we dump this, this will be 10 yards. Once we dump this 10 yards, they'll pull another truck in from the side and dump onto the, this truck. So this truck will probably pour almost all of this when we got here as we can reach back. This thing reaches about 50 feet, I believe this one. The other one reaches closer to 60 feet. They're an older one. I say older, it's only a couple years old. But we'll probably have to cut that boot off because it's probably gonna be too long. If he doesn't have a shorter. Oh, you brought a shorter boot. Beautiful. I called him to ask him that. He's gonna change that boot out because that boot's too long. By the time we snake under this roof, we're gonna be, our angle's gonna be low. So, he has to kind of stick the thing out there and then back underneath. We got her all underneath the roof here. Somebody get on that side and watch. bottom of this we gotta watch. Watch the bottom of that. Is it gonna clear? This? Yes. 
What do you want to do? Hold on, you can come back. You can come back a little more. Come on back a little more, buddy. You got this here, we gotta be careful. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Alright, good. I gotta watch that right there. Well, that gave us another three feet. That'll be perfect. We've got these down right here. Oh, okay. Ready to rip. Just a, that thing will extend out even further. But like I said, we're not going to read to let the wheel go back. But this will save us a lot of, uh, a lot of extra work. Wheeling on top of this tubing too. You have to use plywood when you wheel on it. So we're looking for a five, five and a half slump today. This concrete's got 1% accelerant in it because it is mid-March right now, the middle of March. Sometimes we can't even pour concrete this time of year. It's so cold. But we've had a warm year this year. on the bottom. It's a big circular. Runs right around the circle. Pretty slick she is. Now we're going to fill those wheel barrels. That's as far as we can reach right there. So we'll have to wheel, I don't know, probably eight feet. And then we can shoot the rest. So we can pull it a little bit. These posts are eight feet apart. So eight feet back to there. We'll get to there with the wheel barrels. We got our plywood pieces down so we don't damage the tubing, like I said. That one, I got it uh, from, from, that, from that lady. I think it's the wrong angle, ain't it? No. What's that, buddy? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. We can use that boot, right? You can raise it up about six more inches. A little more right there. I'd leave it on there. I'd leave it on there. Otherwise, we got to take it off. We got to put it back on. Nah. We'll be all right. Let her rip. Let her rip. We're all right. We're overthinking. I know. You can raise it back up once it sinks down a little. Once you get some weight on it, just raise it up a little bit. Right? Get some, let's get some mud moving, man. Don't forget to put your outriggers down. Huh? You're not used to the truck? I saved you there. That'll probably keep it from settling a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That'll help with your outriggers down. It's good mud. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. of your wheelbarrow though. tripod here.
Mike sitting there with the bow for now. Say again. All right, guys, we got uh, 18 yards in, two nines. Got us all the way back to there. Just got this last bit to do. It's gonna be just this section here, so. Let's try to get you set up here so you can see something. So right now guys, we got everything done except the little porch and the truck driver's putting some air entrainment in his load right there. He's got a little bag of it. I'll show you what that looks like. He's gonna put half the bag in. He's dumping it right in there and then he's gonna mix the load up for about five minutes. Get it all mixed up and then we will do this little piece of exterior concrete. Air entrainment just keeps your concrete from freezing. It uh, gives the a water, the water a space to go. Puts little micro bubbles in it. And when it freezes, it doesn't uh, pop the surface because we have some cold weather here in New York. Look at that truck driver with the Bondo built hoodie on. Let me see that bag. Can I see that bag on a video? See what it, just uh, yeah, what it is. You see it in about half the bag. Yeah, there. half the bag, thanks. Yep. Super Air Plus. Air entrainment head mixture. Yeah. Yeah, just says on the back says uh, to mix up five to seven minutes. Yep. So I'll Perfect. Mix up here Thank you. Yep. He's gonna mix that up now, and then we'll do our little porch. And man, it doesn't go any smoother than that, really, guys. It didn't take us long.
wind right there. Solid wind. Get that mag dirty, Bob. Yeah. It's been a long winter, huh? Oh yeah. I lost it. I found it yesterday, but I lost it. <laughs> you lost the mag. Yeah. all day yesterday looking for it. Pretty much. I can't show up, but I Yeah. Should have put some dirt up against that. Well, last time I knew I was going to leave. We got enough stakes in it, I guess. The concrete vibrator too. I want to play with it. Gonna yeah, we're gonna play with the vibrator here in a minute. Be ready. But you want it on that side too, Chris? What vibrator? Yeah. No. You're never gonna see that. Why would you bother vibrating? Just because I want to play with the new vibrator. Come on, Bob. Hey, I'm not gonna stop it's a new, it's a new toy. Here he comes. Hey, how many cases of blades do you want at 40 bucks a box? Ooh. The, 12, the 14 inch ones? 40 bucks a piece? A box. Oh, uh, yeah. A box. For four. What? It's 10 bucks a blade. It's I want a lot of them. I want a lot of them. I'm just losing out the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little so we, didn't put a, we didn't put enough dirt up against it. Oh well. It'll be nice and thick right there on the edge. Usually make our edges a little thick. We bought a used uh, Makita concrete vibrator. And it works. That works pretty nice. Yeah. Just like Chris's. No, but now we got two of them. Yeah, it's got the longer whip. That'll be good for ICF for that yeah. longer whip. Oh, Rose Man, What's wrong, buddy? What's wrong, buddy? Hi, Bob. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, Ro. Hi, Ro. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Say hi to everybody, Ro. Bro, say hi to everybody. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, everybody. He's so happy to be out of the house with Dad. Aren't you? You love to be with Dad working, huh? Well, guys, we're about done. Chris is just screeding across there with our air and train concrete. And then we will uh, get to finishing this bad boy after a little bit. We are fixing the septic system here. We got gopher in his natural habitat. We uh, realized that his D-box is all deteriorated and the concrete's all falling apart. So we just got the floor poured. Now we're fixing it for him. We got uh, the MR here, so... And Kevin the Kubota. The bonus. Yeah, bonus work here. Uh, so we got to dig all that out, take the concrete tank out of there, and put a new tank in there. Because when we put our new septic line in, we realized the tank is pretty much junk. So that's what we're doing now. We're just waiting on the concrete. Figured we'd help out the homeowner a little bit. 
Gopher's just dying to get in the dirt work. <laughs> dying. dying to get in the dirt work. I'm waiting all winter to get in the dirt. At least they got some nice dirt to dig in here. Yeah, this right. is all nice sand. They must have imported this sand. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's all clay everywhere it's we were working. We yeah, the whole hill is clay. Well, you just get into the hill. This is like the best septic sand. I thought they brought it in. Honestly. We could we could save it. We could save it, guys. <laughs> We're gonna send it home with you. Right, so you can fix oh, it. I can fix it. Yeah. A little bit. Daddy wampus. <laughs> <laughs> Just a touch. Just a touch. Greg says, ah, I just pull a little pack. Yeah, She'll be good. Don't look She's good. Put some concrete around it. Put some put a little concrete around it. He didn't even say bye to anybody. He, had the truck no, he, did yeah, he was like, I'm out of here. He didn't want you to tell him to do anything else. <laughs> Just a little bit. What I think we ought to do is throw this pieces into the bucket. Mm -hmm. And then they can suck that water out of I'll get the bucket down here. up a little bit for it. Then we'll clean all that out. It's a shitty job, but somebody's got to do it, huh? This is concrete life, you know what I mean? <laughs> the things we get into. The things we get into is concrete life. Come right apart, no big deal. The things we get ourselves into here, guys, we're pouring concrete and then uh, doing septic repair at the same time. There we go, that wasn't so bad. We got a new plastic Z box, but we gotta re root it a little bit. You can move that one line, you popped it out. We'll reroute that one, anyways. That's the one I'm gonna change. Give her a pull, she'll come right out of there. There we go. We got it out of there. Picked it up with the thumb, threw it in the skidster bucket and get rid of it. Now we gotta kinda clean all that out of there. That's gonna be the fun part. You want to shovel it into my bucket? So we can get it right out of there? Yeah, I'll, I'll set the bucket right down in there. What's that? Probably. 
Get right rid of it. <coughs> okay, we got his septic all fixed. New D box in there for him. Plastic D box. So everything's good. We just moved this line over because there was four in the old box going in the side. And this box only had three holes. So we just moved this back to here and straight in. Boom da boom. Ready to rip. We're gonna backfill this bad boy. Get everything cleaned up. Okay, it's one o'clock. This is hitting the backside. The sun's, you can see where the sun line is. So this is gonna dry quicker right here where the sun is. Mike's over there in the other building hitting the edges. So you ain't even gotta get on the knee boards, uh, slider boards. Um, we did change something a little bit. Big Biscuit was thinking. Said, uh, we ought to have a pitch to this front porch and I was like yeah we should have a pitch to the front porch and we didn't so we ended up digging it out a little bit and sloping it this way so that uh, any water gets in there I don't know we just got so quick to fill it right in we never pitched it so it's coming good we got a nice breeze coming through here I mean being one o'clock it's looking really good so I think we're gonna have a late day by no means here today. And we got the septic system all, uh, the, the fix there all backfilled. Just got that done. He's into the new tank, the homeowner, and he's gonna put a couple T's in there, baffle T's, and then I can backfill that and then grade it all off. And uh, things are looking really good. over here is all polished out because the sun is shining in half of it. See the sun's over here. So that sun's been shining on half this floor the whole time. We're getting a little bit sun peeking into here. You can see the line right there. See that line? That's the sun. So this should be done before that. It's polishing up nice. He's putting laminate floor over it anyway, so we don't have to get it too perfect, but we'll get it nice. It's a warm day for this time of year. There's my buddy Ro. Hey Ro! What you doing, Bum? What you doing, Bum? Hey buddy. Buddy. Waiting on that floor to dry, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah, waiting on that floor to dry. Mike's just hitting that by hand. He talked to the homeowner and he's putting uh he's gonna put tile on this floor. Tile or laminate. So he doesn't really need it to be shined out the whole thing. So we're gonna hand bomb that section there. Cause the sun never got in there today, so the sun got about this far, right where you can see it shined out. Mike's gonna fly down through there. Get that all uh, closed off nice. Got his yard looking good. Backfills all the septic. Over there is all done. I knocked down all the clay out back, but it's got to dry. It skits through it right up to the top of its tracks. All this clay dirt we dug out of here. That'll dry up. It's gonna take a week or so to dry that up. To get good weather. Alright guys, we are about done here. Mike's just hitting a little bit of them edges. And she shined out halfway decent. 
We're gonna pull this machine off and get out of here. We got everything cleaned up around here. We're gonna come back tomorrow and saw cut this. So I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow after we saw cut it. We'll finish this video out. Look at him go. Rowan's mad. He's over there whining. All right, guys, we're here the next day. Me and Chris are going to cut this bad boy. This is the finish we got. We're gonna slice and dice this bad boy. Looks like it rained last night. Over here, got some a little bit of puddling. Well, that's what she turned out like. I'm going to cut it and I'll show you what it looks like. We're going to sweep it off and then the homeowner is going to keep it wet. That's what he's doing in here too. He's flooding it. As you can see underneath there, he's got it all wet. He keeps wetting it down. We're going to do that for oh, a week or two. There's our little front porch. He's going to cut this two by six out of here. That'll get cut right there and the rest will... They will uh, build a wall on top of that. And there'll be walls built between here. And this will all get closed in. And it's all going to be heated space. Okay guys, we just washed it all off. We got all our cuts made. It's kind of dark under here, but it turned out really, really nice. Customer's wicked happy. This is probably the best customer we've ever worked for. He wicked takes care of us. We were over here, he's buying us lunch. He's uh, got coffee, water for us. If you get a good contractor, take care of him. Speaking of taking care of people, take care of me, guys. Smash the like button if you like this stuff. Um, give me a comment for sure. Good, bad. 
anything you want to say i'll take it um and uh if you're not a subscriber subscribe i'm trying to hit 50k subscribers i'm right on the edge of it we're starting early this year got a lot of good stuff coming so stay tuned um hit that notification button too if you're a subscriber make sure you're getting notifications of our all our videos we do some cool stuff thanks guys